guys and welcome to the show and today as promised I'm doing my review of the Orient Bambino and please forgive my rather raspy uh, baritone voice um, it's that time of year again and uh, for some reason I always get a cold uh, this time of year uh, but anyway I will continue and soldier on uh, so now, I, I did do a video where I, I talked about this watch briefly and I mentioned that it was a gift from a friend and they were really curious to see what I think of it. Um, a bit of an awkward situation because, um, you know, if, if I really didn't like it, uh, it's, you know, it's a bit rude to um, critique a gift, but um, it's somebody very close to me and, and uh, you know, they, they, they really didn't mind and um, to be honest, so far, uh, for a watch of this price range, it's it's quite um, is amazing. The right word, yeah, amazing is the right word. Um, so let's have a look at it. Um, let's have a closer look, and I'll just read you the uh, the, uh, the model number. And this is the Orient Bambino Classic uh, S E R two four zero zero D B zero. And this is a, a, a 21 joule uh, automatic um, in-house um, made in Japan uh, as you can see from the there we go now we're in focus as you can see made in Japan and this is the caliber 48743 movement and as you can see it's got quite a nice suite to it um, now this is obviously uh, a 1950s uh, inspired uh, vintage uh, design and uh, this is actually the, the the second version of the Bambino the the original Bambino had just uh, baton hour markers whereas this has Roman numerals on every other baton so uh, you have um, that could be a one I guess but it's a it's a just a stick baton and then the two the date four there and then another stick then in Roman numeral then a stick so um, and it gives it a very kind of uh, classic tasteful um, sophisticated sophisticated look um, and it's just done absolutely impeccably I mean the the way I mean you guys know I have a date just with Roman numerals and um, um, the execution on the dial here is flawless so we have a 40 millimeter case uh, with a thickness of 12 millimeters um, and lug to lug is 46 and an unusual lug width of 21 millimeters which I feel is a, is, is a little bit too large I think uh, in keeping with the, the design of this watch it would have been nice it was maybe a, a 20 millimeter or, or just a flick smaller I think would have been a bit more refined um, you have the crown here at three o'clock uh, next to the date. Nice responsive um, uh, crown here. No screw in, obviously, because it's it's not a dive or anything like that. Water resistance thirty meters, so you know it's basically you know take it off if you're gonna wash your hands or do the washing up or anything like that. Uh, we have this quite tall domed mineral crystal. Um, and people have said it does scratch quite easily, and and for this price point, um, you know, I'm not uh, I'm not going to complain too much. Um, you know, it would have been nice to have a sapphire, but uh, you know, for under two hundred dollars, I'm really not going to complain. Um, let's look at the dial now. So this is definitely the the best feature of the watch, and and what makes it stand out. Uh, to its, um, I guess you'd say, rivals, um, is this just very classic, tastefully done, and very well proportioned dial. Um, we have two, sorry, just not the camera, we have two outer scales here, uh, one indicating um, seconds. It's just very, very nicely done. The hands are slightly thinner and smaller than the previous Bambino, uh, highly polished. And I feel it goes with the Roman numerals very, very well. Uh, and I think they probably probably did that to complement the Roman numerals. Um, so you have all applied Roman numerals and batons here. 
really nice. Let's see how we can zoom in there. Um, I really like the applied logo even, and it has just that flick of red. Um, I mean, they, they could have not even bothered, but um, I think it's just done so well, this kind of uh, little, bit, little bit of heraldry in their logo there, uh, which is really, really nice. Um, so we have uh, a mix of, of, of polished surfaces and then um, satin finish as well. Um, and it, it, it's continued on the lugs there. Absolutely stunning. I mean, I, I can't... It doesn't look like... You know, uh, I think my friend paid about $120 for this. Um, it just doesn't look... It doesn't look that cheap, does it? I mean, it looks a lot more expensive. And, and I think... Um, you know, I'm not really a dress watch type of guy, but... But... Um, something as, as, as affordable as this, it's... Um, you know, it's... it's not that much to, to, to add to your collection um, and to have a you know in-house um, really robust Japanese made movement it's just it's just fantastic um, really can't believe it really now let's let's look at the downfalls um, first of all I'm really not a big fan of the strap uh, it's got to be said it's a little bit cheap looking um, obviously, they, they, you know, you can't have everything at this price point. Um, I would have loved it to t taper down a bit more, just to give it that more kind of sophisticated, uh, a little bit more refinement. Um, it doesn't seem to taper at all. Um, haven't measured it, but it doesn't seem to taper that much, or at all, in fact. Um, and also, I'm not a big fan of the um, buckle here. The buckle to me, if we just look at the the watch and then look at the buckle, it's not really in keeping. The buckle's very contemporary looking and the watch is very, uh, you know, 1950s. So it, to me, it doesn't really work. But, um, you know, I think if you put your own strap on this, a nice Hirsch strap perhaps, um, something a little bit more smarter, a little bit more not as cheap looking, uh, then the buckle will be uh, of a little bit more higher quality and design. So um, that's not really an issue for me because you, you, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to change this um, this uh, this um, strap. So, uh, but it is genuine leather, and uh, you know, it's it's sturdy. It's it's pretty well made. The stitching's done well. I just don't like this kind of glossy faux. Uh, faux kind of uh, what, what is that crocodile or something so this kind of just just doesn't look as quality as if we just look at the the, the watch itself you know I think what I might do I might put a put a high quality strap on this later and, 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 and do a follow-up video um, <coughs> excuse me so let's have a look at the back uh, made in Japan, Orient, I uh, haven't even taken the sticker off really, um, automatic, stainless steel, blah blah blah, um, just a bog standard uh, screw down case back, um, nothing really to write home about. Another negative is there is no signed um, uh, crown would have been a nice touch to have the logo again on the crown but you know at this price point you can't really be too fussy can you so um, now how does the crown actually feel there is no screw down it's just simply pull it out very responsive very easy to use there is no manual winding on this uh, that's another little bit of downer but the rotor is very responsive and I must admit it does uh, has a 40 hour power reserve and uh, it winds very very easily it's very it's very sensitive to uh, your movement and the rotor is very fluid and you can um, it does have a nice tick to it, it does sound nice um, it doesn't feel cheap or, 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 or it doesn't fit actually it doesn't feel like a watch of this price range it feels you know something a bit more expensive 
Um, so you got a 40 hour power reserve, which is which is a good amount, you know. Uh, for this price, I think it's really, really good. So there we go, on the wrist. Now, this is a 40 millimeter case, and personally, I think it's a tad too big. Um, you know, if you imagine my, my date dress is 36, um, and a lot of watches uh, from from the vintage, uh, you know, a lot of vintage watches are of that kind of size, and I think 40 is just a fraction too big. If this was a 38, it really would be, um, you know, a little bit more sophisticated. But I understand the demand for for larger watches these days, and 40 isn't too bad. So in conclusion, uh, this is in fact I've just realised is the cheapest watch I've ever owned, um, and for the cheapest watch I've ever owned, it's really not that bad. Um, it's quite impressive. Um, it's it's ironic that it's the cheapest watch I've ever owned, but probably looks the most expensive. Uh, but you know, it's it's not strong enough for me to start denouncing all my higher end pieces. I mean. Um, you know, I'm not going to start selling my Rolexes or my Omegas or, or, or even my really high-end pieces like my Charles Frodsham. I'm not going to be in any rush to get rid of those. Um, but having said that, for what it is and what you get for the money, it is very, very impressive. Um, and, I, you know, you've got to take your hat, hat off to the, to the Japanese for, for, for being able to pull off such a high quality product um, for so little um, it's it's quite unbelievable really as I said I'm not in any rush to 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 sell all my my higher end pieces uh, um, I think the beauty is is of, of something like this is that it is affordable it is um, easily available and and you know it's just a nice addition to the collection um, now, there is a white version, white dialed version of this, uh, and the difference mainly being, apart from the dial color, is the applied markers are, are in a kind of rose gold. But um, I feel, <clears throat> I feel that, that this black dial is kind of a bit more, um, a little bit more easily matched with different kind of outfits, and um, you know, I mean, this would. This would go really nicely with a suit or even just casual attire. And as my first um, kind of foray into um, Orient watches, it isn't that bad. I mean, um, I didn't really know what to expect. This being my first Orient, it delivers hands down. I mean, there's, there's, there's really, apart from tiny little design flaws in terms of the strap and this, this, this rather modern buckle uh, you know it's a it's a cracking little watch um, okay guys I think I'll leave it there let me know what you think um, this cost about uh, I got it for um, well my friend got it for 120 dollars um, and I believe you can still buy them on eBay for, for that amount uh, would I recommend it absolutely if you want an, a vintage piece but don't want to take the risk of of something that is that is going to be quite expensive to uh, service and maintain you know just over a hundred bucks you can get something like this which I think is um, a really good way to go okay guys I'll leave it there thank you for watching please like and subscribe and uh, catch you next time okay ciao